And we're live. Welcome to the Legacy Leadership Show with Adrian Chenault, a very competitive, awesome Tom Chenault, and <laughs> truly one of the leaders of leaders that, of all time who we love, Dr. Louis Ariaza. How are you, Dad? Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's Louis Ariaza. How are you, baby? I'm, I'm telling all of you, I'm not asking you a question yet, I'm introducing you. I am telling all of you, there's nobody like this guy. You just can't believe it. He gets up at four o'clock in the morning, starts praying, does all that jazz. Then he goes and works out like crazy. He's got these three boys that are just monomaniacal about personal development and athletics and at the academics like he is. His wife is one of the premier trainers of network marketing women on the planet. This is a family of success doing all the right stuff, giving all glory to God. I don't know anybody like him. So he's been married a long time. And I don't know how long his two mother-in-laws have lived with him, but it's been forever. One of them, unfortunately, just passed his mother, but Lewis's mother. But Avelia's mother is still there, not doing so well. But I'm telling you what, you've never seen anything like this family. And they are who you want to be when you grow up. And I'm telling all of you, big network marketers, little network marketers, whatever you are, you've got something to learn in this hour. And you're going to learn it from the one and only Louis Ariaza at a level you've never heard before. Next week, Darren Prince, agent to Goggins, Tom Brady. All these guys is going to be on the show showing you how to take your contact list and turn it into mega bang. And that's going to be fun. He's a good friend of mine. He's coming to town to hang with me over the 4th of July. This guy is, he's the guy that put me in the room one-on-one -on -one with Magic Johnson for three hours. You're going to like next week's show. But right now, we've got the creme of the creme. We got the man. He is the king. And I talk to him every day. He's a dear friend of mine. Never met anybody like him. He's like my mentor, but he tells me he, you know, I'm his. It's a lie. I'm only older. So take it away, Dr. Louis Ariasa. How are you, buddy? I am wonderful. And, and again, thank you, Tom. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, as, as I've shared this many, many times before, um, my mentor said this one time, maybe the probably the second quote that I best remember and most have used he said, you never know how far reaching what you may think or say, think or do today will affect the lives of millions tomorrow. It's better to light one candle than to curse the darkness, get the big idea and all else will follow. And so I, I want to thank you both because you never know. I know, Tom, just like you have changed my life in the last 11 years. We don't know who's listening to this. We don't know who's watching this. We don't know what state of mind they may be in. And that's, you know, I was just speaking to to your dear friend and and you just and, you know, this 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 a word, a message, a thought, a concept a philosophy can can be what people need to get over the hump, get over the day, get over the week, get over the month and, and radically, radically change their life. So um, it's always an honor and a privilege. And I am very, very humbled and grateful because I know that you have powerhouse people on this on this uh, on this Zoom, on this call with you every single Wednesday. So thank you both very much. And you're the man. And I'm telling you, if anybody deserves to be front row seat, your daily method of operation, your study of the masters of network marketing and the masters of personal development. I'll go all the way to the Bible and Waddles, whatever his first name is, Wallace Waddles, all this stuff that you come with every day, not every week. Not This isn't a, like a little pithy once a week deal you do. You train all day, every day for the, for the masses, don't you? Absolutely. You know, Again, my, my mentor said this a long time ago. He said, reasonable men never achieve anything. So my, my goal has always been to be unreasonable. My goal, you know, sometimes my kids say, gosh, dad, you're crazy. You, you have to be a little crazy. You have to be a little crazy to have a le le legacy leadership. You have to be a little crazy to, to be a, a on fire, you know, on fire father and on fire husband. You have to be a little crazy to be a millionaire. You have to be a little crazy to to live a life that God has called you to live. So, so there is, you know, I'm, I'm, I try to live my life as unreasonable as possible. It's not a shtick. It's not a thing that I do. It's just how we live our lives. You know, God has been so incredibly good to us and it would be a shame for us not to maximize and squeeze every single second out of every day, out of every person, out of every individual. So absolutely. This is not, this is just who we, this is just who we are. 
And what kind of, I mean, we can't do income claims. It's against the rules, but it's easy for us to say that you have made a wheelbarrow full of money over your career by not doing it yourself, by developing and training leaders. And your entire focus is duplicating yourself and duplicating first mindset, then yourself and thinking out of the box all the time to make sure that you are on the leading edge of everything. I love that about you. Thank you. You know, again, I'm gonna be, I don't want to be redundant, but my mentor told me a long time ago, he said, many people, many people wear a label, but they don't live the brand. And there's a big difference between wearing a label and living a brand, right? There's a big difference between wearing Louis Vuitton, but being, being Louis, right? There's a difference between wearing Prada and being Prada. There's a difference between buying a football and being Tom Brady. And so our goal has always been to give people a new identity. You know, your, your friend Elizabeth that was just on with, that we're just chatting it up. She has, she has created a new identity for herself uh, in, in the space of multi-level marketing, the space that I love so much and I hold so dearly to my heart. We attract, so we attract so many people, but their identities aren't what they want to do. So they are living a life of duality, right? They, they want a big life. They want a better life. They want financial stability, but they're, they have an employee, an, an employee mentality. They're taking orders from a manager. So they're just living two different lives, right? So our job, my job is to reframe them, right? Reframe their life and help them find an, an identity that's going to help them live a better life. That better, but doesn't mean that they become millionaires. Better doesn't mean that they that they buy a mansion. Better just means better than where they are, right? Just a little bit better. And so we begin with that, right? We begin with with finding and creating that identity that that they so much are, are looking for. You know, lately I've been sharing with a lot of people that life life is just neutral, right? Life is like vanilla ice cream. You go into a an ice cream parlor and you, and you say, okay, you want chocolate ice cream or well, they're going to give you vanilla and they're going to put hot fudge on it. You want, you want strawberry. They're going to give you vanilla and they're going to put strawberry syrup on it. So life is neutral until you and I define it. doesn't matter what happens to us, whether it's, whether people perceive it good or people perceive it bad. We, it only is what it is until you define it. You know, my story 11 years ago, my wife and I lost everything. I lost everything. We had absolutely nothing for the first time in our life. We had absolutely no money coming in. But at that moment, that moment, I, I, I knew that I had the opportunity and I was and the ability to refine, to relabel my situation. I didn't have to label it as, as a bad situation, as a, oh my goodness, I'm falling into depression and everything's so negative. So when I when I changed, when I labeled it in a way that that empowered me, things began to work better. So I helped my one of my goals is just help people to reframe their life, whether they've gone through a divorce, whether they've gone through a bankruptcy, whether they've gone through a setback, whether they've gone through a death. You just mentioned my mom passed away six months ago. You know, we had the honor of taking care of my mom. Literally, she lived with us for about 18 years. My mother-in-law, who's going to be 97 in a month, has lived with us for 28 years. And we reframe that. I mean, it's hard to have, you know, to, to, to be, to live with your, with your mothers that, are, that aren't that healthy. But to us, it, it brought us honor and it brought us privilege. And, and we experienced a love that you can't just read in a book. So it's very, very powerful when we begin to not just wear the label, but when we begin to live the brand, whatever that brand may be. For me, the brand is leadership and network marketing. That's my brand. So once we do that, so that's why it's something that we do all the time. That's awesome. And I I think that it it's so whatever you go through in life, there's what happened and then there's how you choose to respond and to interpret and the story that you tell yourself about what happened. And those two things are not the same. Yes. So talk about, you know, whether it's something from your own experience or something that you've helped someone in your organization to work through, like what does it look like to act like practically to create that reframing? So I, I just got off the phone with a wonderful young lady who had asked me to do a one-on-one, a Zoom. So I said, sure, I'll do the Zoom. And then they, she called me, she called me uh, uh, this morning. She, this was yesterday. I had, I had agreed to do the Zoom today. She called me this morning. She says, oh, my prospect said that uh, she had things to do and uh, she couldn't attend the Zoom. I said, okay. I said, what do you think? And she says, well, I thought that, you know, she had things to do. I said, look, in life, 
in life, there's always going to be a leader and there's always going to be a follower all the time. In life, for lack of better terms, either I'm going to close you with my philosophy and my perception or you're going to close me with your philosophy and your perception. But someone's going to close somebody. It's not a negative thing because I may want to close you so you can be so you can have a life that you want. Right. You may you may. Tom closes me every day, every day when I call Tom, his his opinions and his beliefs, they, they I, I listen to them and they, I take part to most of them because he has what I want, right? So therefore, someone is always helping and leading somebody. I said, so in my in my world, when someone says they don't have time, that's a story. When someone says they don't have money, that's a story. I said, now, I said, did does this lady have cancer? She said, no. I said, is this lady currently going through a terrible divorce? She says, no. I said, is this lady's child been taken hostage? She said, no. I said, then you could have created a different story. And the moment that you create a bigger, more valuable story, now you become the leader. So I said, I'm going to walk you through some steps on how psychologically and neurologically you can change people's stories instantaneously. So now they start to follow you and start instead of succumbing to a story that they that that has never given them what they want. As you and I know, the common man never has time. The successful man finds the the time. The common man never has money. The common man is always a penny short and a second late. It's a story. It's a story that they keep repeating to themselves. So like just like today, I told her there's there's steps that we can use. There's questions that we can ask. Oprah Winfrey, Oprah Winfrey said, the quality of your questions dictates the quality of your life. So if I start asking you questions that's going to create a that's going to make you a little bit more vulnerable. If I initiate the vulnerability, you initiate the vulnerability. Now, our vibrancy, our, our vibration begins to increase. Check this out real quick. Check this out. So there's there's multiple levels of vibration in the universe, right? The ground has the lowest vibration. And then there is and then there's plants. Then there's animals. Then there's human beings. Then there's uh, then there's sound. Then there's light. Then there's sound. And then there's thoughts. Thoughts have the highest level of vibration in the entire universe. So all I have to do, all I have to do is get you to think just a little different. That's it. Because the minute that I get you to think a little bit different, now you're going to emit an energy that's going to produce a vibration that's going to connect with the frequency of what you want. Adrian, whatever you want has frequencies. Whatever I want has frequencies. If I want to buy a Toyota that has a certain frequency, if I want to buy a Mercedes that has a certain frequency, if I want to buy a Rolls Royce that's ha that has a higher frequency, I can attract any of those things as long as as long as I am on the highway. I'm sorry. Go ahead. We got to take a break. It is Tom Chenault. It's Adrian Chenault. It's Dr. Louis Ariaza, Legacy Leadership. So stick around. We'll be right back. How about Richard? That, that Brooke? was the time to go to break frequency. I felt that. <laughs> Richard <laughs> Brook. My bad. Man, my bad. He didn't love with you. You're you're great. My bad. You, that was it. That was so good. This so. is like so great. I can't believe it. Can't believe it. I had no idea you were so smart. This is beautiful. <laughs> my you bad. Guys, this is a generic show. This is where you go to learn what you. I sent a note out to all the big guys. We'll talk about this on the other side. And we're back. It's the Legacy Leadership Radio Show. We got Louis Ariaza with us. This guy is amazing and a student of the profession like you've never seen before goes through thinking a girl rich that big notebook once a year in spanish in english to the, anybody that wants to learn how to control their mind this guy is your guy and i sent that i sent a big text out to all the leaders of network marketing uh it is a bad to the bone list and those are that's the rotation of people that we want on this show but it's generic. It's about your best skills. And I wrote to those guys today, you will learn something you did not know from Louis Ariaza. And that's the, you know, I'm tomorrow I'm on with Richard Brook live on, on StreamYard on Facebook. Again, one more time doing exactly this because we learn. And if we stop learning, we might as well head for the graveyard. Right, Louis? Amen. Amen. I think, uh, Absolutely. You know, every, everyone, everyone has things to do, but then there's things that we need to do, right? My mentor would always tell me circumstances don't change responsibilities. Circumstances do not change responsibilities. All of us have circumstances. All of us, you know, sit in traffic. All of us have kids. All of us are married. All of us have mortgages. It doesn't change the responsibility 
of being the best person you can be. It doesn't change the responsibility of being a leader. It doesn't change the responsibility of taking people under your wing and helping them transform their, transform their lives. So, no, I'm with you 100%, Tom. How about that day Eric Worre pulled you out of the crowd and on the stage and just totally ripped your face off with questions, thinking he was going to intimidate you, and you had him for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Do you remember that? that uh, that's, awesome. been, that's been one of the most memorable days in, in, in for me in the industry of, of network marketing. I uh, hold Eric Worre in tremendous with tremendous high value. He has he is definitely the epitome of a servant. He has built an empire based on a very strong and duplicatable philosophy. You have all these top, top people in, in, in the world that follow him. He his, from my perspective, his gift is the art of simplicity. You know, he really is able to take a very complex situation and break it down. So when uh, when you, Tom Chanel, had <laughs> were able to make that connection and I went there, it was it, it was only four minutes. It felt like four seconds. But it was such a great, great experience. You deserve it, man. And more and more and more. And a couple of people, the great Nikki Malley, who is an unbelievable networker in her own right, just said, you need to be on bigger stages all the time. And that's the truth. And let's all do that. Let's all aspire to be Louis Ariaza. And what I love about this guy, he gets up every day, putting the light on everybody but himself, which makes him shine more. And that <laughs> is all about servant leadership. Right, Louis? Absolutely. One thing that we've talked a lot about lately, Tom, and I think maybe you and I have kind of touched upon this in one of our, you know, five or six conversations that we have every day is that, um, I, you know, I, I don't have much time. You know, I, I don't have much time and it's relative. Right. But, you know, I'm, I'm 54 years old. In two months, I turn 55 and I don't have much time. The next 20, 30 years are going to go by very, very quickly. So I'm I'm downshifting it and putting the pedal to the metal. I'm, I'm redlining it because because there's a lot of people that I believe need to hear a message of hope and inspiration. There's a lot of people that need to, that, that want a better life and are willing to pay the price. They just, they just don't know, you know, they have all the building blocks. They have the, they have the wood and they have the nails and they have the hammers and they have the saws, but they just don't have that blueprint yet. And so, you know, my wife, both my wife and I feel the same way. You know, we, we are in a phase in our life or in a chapter in our life that it's about let's, let's build as many people as we can as quickly as possible because life is too short. Life is way, way, way too short. And for me, 20, 30 years is, 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 is a little bit of time, you know? So I gotta, I, I, I'm passionate about, um, about, want, about seeing people, seeing people manifest their lives and seeing people really connect and, and live, live their best life. I know, it's a, I know it's a cliche and I know it's a cliche that many people use, but I really believe that we can. And one of the things that I, I think you have increasingly done over the years that I've known you, you've always done it, but even more so is that your life is so fully integrated, right? Like you've got your sons who are playing football. You've got your son, Fabian, who's working with you. You've got your, you know, both of your mothers, now one of your mothers living with like everything is together and it's all, it's all kind of in harmony because it's all it's all one thing. It's not these silos, like your life is one. Has that really helped you to be able to sustain the pace that you have? 100%, you know, as uh, right now in, in my sense, cause I, I, was, I was sharing with Adrian that my, my uh, I have of three boys, Fabian, Isaiah and Elijah. And Elijah is an incoming freshman. So he practices every afternoon, Monday through Friday. Uh, and Isaiah, he's the quarterback, varsity quarterback. And they practice in the morning. They, they lift weights and do speed training in the morning. And then they come back in the afternoon for practice. So there's a gap from like 1030 to 430. And a lot of kids, these kids that I've recruited and I've helped recruit to our school, they don't live very close. They may live 30, 45, 50 miles away. And their parents can't leave work, pick them up, take them home, bring them back. So like right now, I have Mike, I have Caden, I have Aiden, I have Ray Ray. I have Gavin right now. I have five kids here. Uh, you know, they're, they're all well fed. They're sleeping right now. We'll wake them up. At, as soon as I finish this, we wake them up. They eat again. And then they're back. I take them back to practice. Well, now Isaiah does. Oh, I, Isaiah, Isaiah. We got to <laughs> take another break. This is going by so fast. We'll be back right after this. Legacy right. Leadership with Adrian and Richard. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom, maybe. All oh right. Oh, my God. <laughs>
I got behind. Sorry, I, got, I, I gave you too big a question. I want to pick that up because I actually think that's a, that's super cool. So we're coming back in three seconds. Hold on. I blew that. I got it. And we're back listening to Legacy Leadership with Adrian and Tom Chanel. Richard Brooke is such a constant presence in our comments. He's practically our third co-host. We love you, Richard. And we're talking to Luis Ariaza. And he was talking about before the break, how he, he has two sons who are in high school, both playing football. And these kids are literally living at his house three, four hours a day in between practices. And that has become like one of the great joys of your life to have all these kids around, right? Absolutely. When, when I was, when I was very young and, you know, being born and raised in South Central, um, it was very, very difficult. And one thing that I could never do, uh, I could never have friends over and I could never go to friend's house. I never, ever, 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 I know it sounds, it may sound kind of silly, but I never slept over. I never had a sleepover, ever, ever, ever. And when my wife and I, when we met and we started talking and we started to really, you know, connect our values, we realized that, no, our kids are going to experience something very different. So we have created a life where this is a home that these boys know that they're, they're, that they're safe. This is a home that these boys know that they can be fed that they can rest, that they can recuperate, that they can enjoy. This is what we've built this home for. Um, I love one of the one of the most one of the best things that we have that we experience is walking into our backyard and watching kids just play. You know, we have a basketball court, just play, or, or they're swimming in the pool. It, it, it's not a celebration. It's not a birthday party. It's not a quinceanera. You know, they're just there enjoying themselves, and that to me is one of the greatest feelings because I know it's creating memories for my three boys. I know it's creating, it's, it's, it's your seeds that are moving into your subconscious mind saying, yes, we, we can have this lifestyle. You know, we, we can, you know, we can work hard, but then the fruits of that work can be harmony and family and togetherness. And me personally, if I know that my family is well, then I'm at hundred percent. If I know that my wife is well, then I, I will walk on water and walk through walls. It doesn't matter. The, the work, this work here, Doing leadership, leading people, that's that's simple. That's simple compared to the intensity that I that I seek after having a family that's that's united and together. My son's 22 years old. Every single morning when I see him, when I see him walk by walk through the kitchen into the office to trade, I, it just brings me so much joy because he's learning something that he can do for the rest of his life, but he's learning it through us and with us. And to me, that is that I, I can't put a price on that. You know, I, I, it's it's for those moments and this type of lifestyle to us is priceless. So it's so awesome. And he, I don't know if you saw, I threw his comment up. He, he was on here earlier, and, and you know, to to have that, to have you know your kids choosing in on the business that you're doing, and to say he is not riding your coattails and he is going and building it himself would be an understatement. I mean, these kids are saying, yes, I want what you have. And I know you are not going to give it to me on a silver platter. I know that you're going to insist I go get it for myself. And they're making that happen and they're leading and they're inspiring people many, many years. They're senior, they're inspiring people their own age. And that just must be the best feeling in the world for you. It is every morning. Again, things have changed a little bit because my my middle son Isaiah now drives. But uh, every morning, I I take my my youngest son and my middle son to school, and it takes me eight eight and a half minutes from my driveway to the school campus. So for the first four minutes, we're listening. We're listening to Joe Dispenza, John D. Martini, Bruce Lipton for the first four and a half minutes. For the next three minutes. I'm speaking and I'm elaborating, and then for the last minute they'll put on a mute. They'll put on some song they want to hear. So every every morning is like a seminar. They know this is like seminar on wheels every single morning. Do they love it? Of course they don't love it. Are, are, would they rather listen to Drake every morning? Yes, they would rather listen to Drake every morning. But you know this is this is our lifestyle. But I know I know that that this leadership and this this message these messages I know they don't fall on 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 deaf ears because I hear it. When, when from other people who interact with my boys and I hear commentary that that supports what we're doing. So, you know, it's not something that happens overnight and it's not something that starts when the kids are 21 years old. It starts when, you know, they're three and four years, years old listening to Jim Rohn as they were, you know, we were driving to uh, an event. So so they have their world is is leadership. 
their world is personal development. And I'm, I'm you know, that's just become a, a habit for us. <laughs> I, I will tell you that uh, they, they pretend they are not listening and I was, so I'm sure they are too. Uh, yes, yes, that's right. That's right. Of course, of course. <laughs> you, you, even even if that uh, first time, you know, I remember the, I remember when I wanted when I decided to become a chiropractor, and I did a, a, a summer internship with this chiropractor, Dr. Raul Moreno, in Southgate, and uh, as, he didn't pay me, but as a gift, he gave me my first philosophy book. Actually, it's it's one of these one of these green books back here, one of these green books, and it's called the Philosophy, Science, and Art of Chiropractic. It's about 600 pages and the writing's very, very tiny. And, and I didn't understand any of it, but every day at lunchtime, I would read it and I would read it and I'd read it and I read the whole book and then I read it again. But although I didn't understand it on the conscious level, there were things that were changing within me and, and I didn't know how they were changing, but I know they were changing because my outlook started to change. My, my perspective started to change. My intention began to change. And here I am, you know, 40 years later, and that made a world of a difference. So again, I mean, it's just, it's just the, the fact of these thoughts and these activities that are repeated over and over that really impact people's lives and, and change, the pe change people and help them become more of what they want. I, I totally agree. And, you know, we, we were talking a little bit about this before the show and, and our third co-host chimed in with a really good question. That ties into it. Uh, so I'll ask his question, but I'll tee it up first. So we were talking before the show about, you know, there's, there's so many people that show up to company calls, for example, and they're so hungry and yet they're lacking the systems. They're lacking knowing what to do next. They're lacking the clear, tangible steps and mindsets to get them where they want to go. And so uh, Richard Brooks said, Dr. Lewis, what are the three things you feel an aspiring network marketer, marketing leader needs to do and be every day to maintain progress and achieve your goals? So you know, for whether it's a leader, an aspiring leader, you know, we're all somewhere on that path. What are three things that are key to continue to build that progress, Lewis? Sure, that's a great question. Um, there, there's so many different uh, there's so many different ingredients to to become and attain success, right? There's so many different ingredients to to help a lot of people and to, and to build a, a a large organization in in this space, right? Um, from my experience of 22 years being in this space. I would say that one something that's super important is is having a purpose. Very, very, very different than setting a goal. Goals are achievable, right? But but purpose, you know, what what is what is what is your purpose in life? Can you take that purpose and apply it and intermingle it in what we do? My purpose is very very simple. My purpose is to serve God through serving man. Very simple. So if my purpose in life is to serve God through serving man then man meaning man universal man man and woman then then i then network marketing is perfect for me that's why i found myself i found myself challenged in chiropractic i mean we were it was a multi-million dollar business for us we had seven health centers but i just began to feel that i was out of purpose because i was seeing a lot of people in in the numbers of chiropractic but when i came across network marketing and the numbers that that i could impact were so much larger that became part of my purpose. So my decision that wasn't, wasn't that difficult. So one, I think that we have to really discover what, what is our purpose, right? Number two is we have to change our identity. So many people come into this space and I said earlier, they're, they are, uh, they are a construction worker. They are a mechanic. They're a homemaker. They're a baker. They're a cook. They're an, uh, uh, they're a real estate agent. And all those things are beautiful. And all those things are wonderful. If that is what you see yourself doing for the rest of your life, if you believe that you can impact the world, whatever, as big as the world is, if you believe you can impact the world doing those things, then continue doing them. But if not, then we have to change and we have to we have to change our identity. I always tell people we there's there's two times when we begin. We begin when we get involved in this space and then we begin when 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 the space gets involved with us. Right. We move into it but then it, then there's another date when it moves into us and that's what we call getting the big idea so having a purpose having the identity because we're only going to do things that are in alignment with our identity so um so i'm not a thief 
Okay. Um, I don't need to tell you that, but I'm not. Right? So I'm not going to have thoughts. So if I see a diamond ring on a, on a table, m- my initial thought is not going to be, oh, let me take it because I don't identify with that. Now, if I, if I would have been raised differently, if, I, if I'd have different circumstances and my identity is different, then it would, be, it would lead me to do these things, right? So therefore, one is purpose, two is identity, and three is, is having ex- an exuberant amount of faith, really living by faith, making sure that the Bible says, speak of, speak of what is not as if it is. If anyone in the world has accomplished it, it doesn't matter if, if it's, you know, beating stage four pancreatic cancer. It doesn't mean, it doesn't matter if, if you've lost everything and you're, you know, 70 years old. It doesn't mean if you've been in 15 different companies, whatever it may be, you have to have, you have to have a legendary faith. I mean, you have to muster up, and I'm telling you, you have to muster up this courage to live by faith and speak things into existence that do not exist regardless of what literature says, regardless of what experts say, regardless of what your mom and your dad and your brother and your sister say, regardless of all those things. If you have this this faith, the Bible says the faith of a mustard seed moves mountains. We don't need to move mountains. We just need to recruit people. That's all we need to do, right? So <laughs> we don't need, so if you live that way, right? And every day you wake up, every day I, I tell people, I go to speak, I go to bed, I go to sleep poor, uh, rich and I wake up poor and I get on my horse every day by faith. I get on my I get on my phone by faith. I start, you know, dialing for dollar, calling for cash by faith. I start knocking on doors by faith. I start walking people and meeting people by faith, thinking and feeling that that you have been placed in my life because God has ordained you to be placed in my life. So either you can help me or I can help you. Usually I can help you. That so purpose, identity, and faith, I would say are some of the top three things that that we people that have succeeded somehow some way we weave weave these three elements into their success you you epitomize it and i'm i'm in a real great position to watch you when nobody thinks you're watching and i get to see you live and die with your purpose and i will never see you betray your integrity or your belief in this business and try to get people to take a shortcut or anything else because it's living in service and I love that about you. And literally everything you do is the same thing, whether it's your faith, whether it's your family, whether it's your sports, whether it's your business, it's just the same thing over and over and over again, showing people they can be you. And that's the key is letting people believe that they can be you and you win, right? So we're gonna, we got to take another break, the final segment coming up. But I'll tell you one thing right now, you are with a rock star right here. If you don't reach out and talk to him, get some coaching, you're out of your mind. We'll be right back. Love it. So Time awesome. goes by too fast. Time goes by way too fast. It, it really does. It does indeed. We'll stick around right after the show, though, for a couple of minutes. Uh, so even though the show's over for the radio, we'll still be talking and you can actually cuss. It'll be great. <laughs> so, so even though the show's over, we're, we'll still be on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, sure. So awesome. We got one more radio segment coming up in just a second. So right now we're on Facebook. Yeah, sure. And we're back. It is Tom Chenault. It is Adrian Chenault. It is the Legacy Leadership Radio Show. We've got the great Louis Ariaza with us. You want to get hold of him? He does generic coaching. He does generic training. He is everywhere. He's on Eric Warre's stage. He should be in the four-year career next time. I can't believe it. And on and on and on because this guy is as big as they get and as committed as they get. It's so crazy. I went to his house and he, I, it was a nice house. And he said, see that house down there? And I said, yeah. He says, I'm going to buy it for my dad. So I said, that sounds good. So then he buys the house for his dad and he loves his dad and his mother-in-laws are living in the house with him. And he says, you see that house right up there? He goes, yeah. He says, I'm going to buy it. I go, why? He goes, because this, it would cost me so much money to have a basketball court and that swimming pool put in. I'm just going to buy that place and sell this one. I go, sure you will. Next thing I know, he owns that house. So I go to see that house. It is unbelievable. And I go, you have reached the top of the mountain. He goes, oh, no, 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 no. That's the top of the mountain. I said, what's up there? He says, an unbelievable house. I said, what about it? He says, I'm going to buy it. And he will. And that's what you have. The minute you hit something, that means you go hit something else. That's the guy, this guy's, and his house is unbelievable. 
When he talks basketball court, he's talking Nuggets quality basketball court. Uh, unbelievable, Dr. Lewis. I love who you are. I love your commitment to family. I love your commitment to God and community and everything you do. And it's transcending into those unbelievable kids of yours. So keep up the great work. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, you know, again, if for those of you listening and or, or watching, one of the best things that I have done, one, one thing that I've done correctly in my life, and I've done this for 30 years, is have a mentor. That's that's to me has been the the alpha and the omega. It's been the beginning and the end. I had one mentor who mentored me for 19 years, and I'm talking about like a serious mentorship protege relationship. He passed on. And Tommy has been mentoring me for the last 11 years. And it's just, uh, it, it, when, when I come across people that want to better their life in business, better their, their life in a relationship, and they don't have a mentor in my mind, it's like, wow, you've, you're making things so much more difficult because you will come across people like Tom Chanel. You'll come across people that have had this vast experience of life and they've had tremendous highs and some, some lows but now those become life lessons for people like me, right? And then, then if you come across people that, that have those experiences and are willing to, to teach them to you, now you've, you've found, you found your quan, you found the gold, you found the gold mine that's never ending. So um, it's, not, it's, it's, it's not easy, but when you have a mentor that's willing and capable to take you by the hand and lead you, things become much more doable. And my, you know, you're a, you're a, what's your title? You're a, what all the stuff, Luis Ariaza, chiropractor, or what is it? The chiropractor. Okay. That's what's it. the acronym for that? Like CHR or something? DC. Okay. DC. Good. Mine's DD. And <laughs> Richard Brooke just put that I'm the mentor to the stars and he's wrong. Okay. I have got a DD, Tom Chenault DD. And that means doctorate and drunk because <laughs> I... I'm telling you one thing right now. My purpose in this life is to help those people turn mm -hmm. into right. people like yes. you and Richard Brooke to find the beauty in them where they can mm -hmm. rise up in the ashes of the past to become great human beings. And I know thousands of them. And Darren Price, Prince, that's going to be on next week is of my recovery group. He's mm -hmm. coming to Colorado to stand on the top of Red Rocks Amphitheater and have me hand me his hand him his 15 year sobriety chip. Why? Because we've all been down there. Mm -hmm. We've all been down there. The mark of a man is getting back up and getting up there and staying up there. That's what I want for all of you. I am more proud of my relationship with him, Courtney and Dominic, my little boy, than anything under the planet and my marriage. And I emulated it off of you and Richard Brooke and so many people unbelievable so yeah fact absolutely and, and and if i can share this you know we need to surround ourselves with people like us or better um there, there's a quote that says when a hero falls cowards rejoice and there's a lot of cowards in the universe put that up that, that, are, that are waiting that are waiting for a hero to fall there's a lot of cowards that are waiting for somebody to stumble and to trip and to lose and to go bankrupt and file for divorce. But but that does not deter us because we know that that they're just that way because they would probably wish, wish to have a life like yours, to have a life like Richard Brooke, to have a life like Air Hooray. You know, they, they just wish, but many of them aren't willing to pay that price. Many, you know, I, I've seen you, Tom, get on those calls with your friends and and with the Alcoholics Anonymous and get on daily calls. And I know that you prioritize it because even when you come here, you always excuse yourself for an hour at different times because you got to get on that call. And and I've been on a couple calls and I've been a little uncomfortable. Uh, you know, I've I've never drank in my life, but I've been a little uncomfortable because it's heavy. It's deep. It's a lot of stuff. It's layers and layers upon layers of of toxicity and hurt and pain and dishonesty. And you sit in the eye of the storm with them. And it takes that, it's, just, it's, it's a lot, you know? So, so it's important for us to have this group, this, this group of people that believe in us and, and we believe in them because when we, when we stumble, as everyone stumbles once, twice, 10 times in their lives, 
there, there's a lot of people that are just applauding and, and can't wait for that stumble to come a fall. But there's always going to be a few of us that are going to rally together and say, no, no, let's, let's, you know, let's just dust ourselves off and let's keep going. That's it, man. And Paul Van Dieven's one of my boys. And we are all going to do it next week. It's going to be a recovery show. It is going to be a hope show. This guy also was smoking Joe Frazier and Muhammad Ali's agent. He's the real deal. You're going to have some fun next week, just like we had this week. Reach out to Luis Ariaza. We love you. We'll see you all next week on the Legacy Leadership Show. All right. We're out. We're, we're off. This is the after party. Oh, yeah. This is going to be awesome. So, this Luis, is going to go Okay. Stop being so polite. What do these people really need to do? Here's what it takes. And Randy Gage said it. Here's what it takes to make a million dollars a year in network marketing. And what it takes is all you got. And, you know, so every day somebody says, well, what book is going to set me free? I go, all of them. <laughs> all of them. Yes. You, know, you can ask me what book you should read right now. But if you think you're going to get there in one book, you're out of your mind. Absolutely. This poor kid, Absolutely. I immersed them like you, like you immersed your kids. And it was a lifelong thing of, you know, these kids excelled academically. They expelled, excelled in everything that they did. They got out of college and they realized that it was all human beings that make the difference and it changed your life. And that's how you leapfrogged all the way to the top of the pile, huh? To totally true. And, and I think the crazy thing is you go and talk to these CEOs and huge people and they think in terms of their people. They think in terms of their team. I listened to an interview with uh, Zuckerberg the other day and he goes, How, you know, like what, what keeps you up at night? And he goes, I don't worry about Congress. I don't worry about strategy. The only thing that ever has me not sleep at night is when there's stuff messed up in my team. That's the only thing that matters to me. And if that's going good, everything's going to be fine. And if that's screwed up, I got a big problem and I got to fix it as fast as I can. And I did, you know, he's a freaking robot. I did, of anyone Sheep. on earth, I did Sheep. not expect that to come out of Zuckerberg's mouth. Zuckerberg is a robot? I think so. He's, <laughs> he's, he's, AI. he's a machine. But he's, I mean, he's like, he's not maybe the most charismatic human that you have ever seen on a video. And he, and that's what he talked about, I, which just was brilliant. I thought that was so powerful. Absolutely. And you, yeah. And you, you got to learn. You got to never stop learning. Right, boys? I mean, that's that simple. Mm -hmm. it's Absolutely. Such a, it's a, such a blessing to me to get to work with him every day because the teacher, mm -hmm. the student became the teacher. Mm -hmm. I mean, this thing shifted about a year ago. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I started slowing down and he started speeding up. And mm -hmm. what's happening now is instead of me having to be the advice, I'm looking to him for advice. Mm. And instead of having to pump him up, he's pumping me up. Mm. And, and he's also telling me the same thing that you're telling me is I'm 72 years old and get rid of anything that isn't the most fun in the world and just do the fun stuff. Because like you said, you know, look at Jesse Lee Ward right now. I'll say everybody say a quiet prayer for her. Top of mm -hmm. her game, stage Absolutely. four cancer. And you never yeah. know who it's going to happen to. So absolutely. All of us. Yeah. So let's just count our blessings, make yes. a difference and play it big. Don't you agree? I, I agree. One million percent. There's so many people. There's so many people that want a better life. There's so many people that want to got to their circumstances, put their kids in a better environment, put their kids in better school, retire their husband, retire their wife. And sometimes I think that, you know, you're, you're so close, right? But, but your closeness is like, you're, you're not, you're like around the corner. You just, you got to make that turn. You, you just, until you make that turn, you're not going to see the prize. Until you make that turn, you're not going to really, really see how possible it is. And that's why having a, a, a why having a driving force is what keeps us moving, even during the difficulties. I, you know, I've, I always share the story about Victor Frankl and Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela was at Robben Island for 28 years, 27 years. The first 18 years, he slept on concrete with no pillow and, and nothing to cover himself with. And he would, um, they would have him break rocks for hours and hours and hours and hours and put him in a pile. And once all the rocks were in that pile, now he had to go to that pile and break rocks and put it to this pile. And they, it was just like a mental torture, right? One day, 
they had him dig this hole that was that was like six feet by six feet, six feet deep in his mind. They're going to bury him alive. But after they after they did that, all this all the guards stood around this hole and they urinated on him. They would have him shower as, as the elder statesman. They would have him shower at the end. You know, it was it was a big shower. So all the inmates would shower first and then Nelson Mandela would shower by himself. And all the guards would just laugh at him, right? And this lasted 27 years. And the only thing that kept him mentally sane and physically alive was a promise that he had made to himself, that one day, one day people, the world will know the truth. And, and they knew the truth. And, and you know, and then he was released. And then he went, he became the president of South Africa. And the day of his inauguration, he invited the, the, he invited the head guard and his family was appalled. And they're like, why are you inviting him on your special occasion, the biggest day of your life? 27 years later, he says, because if I don't, if I don't let him know that I'm okay, then I'll always be a prisoner to him in my mind. So I need to, I need to forgive him. Victor Frankl, prisoner of war in Auschwitz, he was captive for so long, but he knew they, they would they would mop the floors and they would take that water boil it with a fish head and serve it to him as, as his dinner every night. And he would change, you know, he was a father and inventor of local therapy. He would, he would make himself think and believe. He'd make himself think and believe his mind, his body. He would make himself feel, feel that this was the best soup, the most nourishing soup he's ever had. And that was the only thing that kept him alive. If we can help more people, if we can help more people, Feel what they want before they have it. I repeat this again. If we can help more people feel what they want before they have it, and we do it over and over and over and over and over again, then manifesting it will be will be guaranteed because our biggest our biggest obstacle is our feelings, not our thoughts. The obese person knows they shouldn't eat that much. The al alcoholic knows he shouldn't drink that much. The, you know, I mean, the, the lazy man knows he should get a job. It's not our thoughts. It's the body. It's our feelings. The minute that the body becomes a master and the mind becomes a servant, we're destined for failure. But the minute that we can get our feelings, our body to really feel what it feels like to attain, to manifest, to accomplish, our mind always wants to. But when our body and our mind are in, are in, are in cadence, lights out, party's over, you will succeed. I guarantee you that. I want to give you a little story about Louis Ariaza that will go down in the books. He was uh, hit by COVID like all of us were hit by COVID. And we were all locked into our houses and all this stuff. And he was looking at his team and he's going, man alive, these people are, you know, they're a little bit paralyzed here and we got to keep big, keep business going. So instead of just accepting what was going on, he started doing research. And a guy named John Hammock said this to me a couple of days ago, and it immediately bounced me back to the conversation with Louis Ariaza three years previous. And John Hammock said to me that at least one member of a family in every family in the world needs to understand Forex trading and understand the markets. Because if you don't understand that, there's another black swan coming that's going to wipe out what you're currently doing. And if you've got that minor skill, under your belt to be able to weather COVID or whatever that storm is, you are going to be miles ahead. So what Lewis did was he embarked on a quest to find somebody smart enough to train his leaders in that. He didn't become the trader. He found the people able to do it. And he instituted a policy inside of his organization where it's almost required that one member of the family does that. And in his family, it's his son, Fabian. And that kid knows this stuff inside and out. And he's teaching other people. And that's what I call seeing around corners, making a stand, being smart enough to understand everything isn't, that anything's possible. And you did that, right, Lewis? Is that pretty much a true story? That that's a very true story. Um, you know, it was COVID and both of Ellie and I simultaneously felt that God was pulling us into always un, under the under under the umbrella of, of, of where we are, but pulling us into uncharted territory. And we started praying for supernatural favor and supernatural favor is, is, is very, very powerful because 
it 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 means that you have to, to submit to something that you may not be know very well. Uh, I, I know leadership very well. I know neuroplasticity very well. I know how to build an organization very well. My wife has a slew of things that she knows very well. Trading is not one of them. You know, we we didn't we were we were completely we were children. We were kindergarten okay, in a reference to trading. But when I saw that opportunity, I knew that was of God because I knew that I didn't know anything. So so the only way this could have worked was because it was supernatural favor. And when we brought it to our company and, you know, our one hour meeting turned out to be a five hour meeting. And it was just like it was just like lock and key. It was just so perfect. So and then look and now, you know, we're helping a lot more people. Uh, help build their, you know, their generational wealth. What's the most amount of people you've had on a conference call for that? Uh, at one point, we almost had 3,000 people. 3,000 people dialed yeah. in at 725 in the morning. Listening yeah, every, to, every, yeah not listening yeah. to Lewis. He found no. the trainers. He found no, yeah. the trainers to train the traders. And yeah. that is beautiful stuff because everybody's mm -hmm. responsible for their own destiny. They don't let yes. anybody trade with real money forever. No. It's just the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. And I'm just looking at confidence in people's eyes. It's no secret. Last week, I was with Robert Kiyosaki all day long, talking financial literacy and how bad it is out there. And what I love is Louis and Avelia and a few of their close friends embraced that, took their destiny in their own hands and did something about it. And that's what every one of you big leaders can do yourself. We can all do it together. We've got a responsibility to this world to do it. Dracy Dewar, this incredible leader down in Australia that's talking hard here. We can do it. All of us can do it. Let's do it. Dr. Ariaza, thanks for sticking around after the show. We love you. Love you. Love you, Adrian. Love you, Tom. You're the best. Eric Warren. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Warren's here. We just talked about him. Tell, tell, tell him about the highlight of your life real quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just, we just shared when, uh, when, because of Tom and Tom's beautiful connection relationship with, uh, with Eric, uh, Eric gave me the honor of being interviewed for a few minutes at one of his incredibly large GoPro events. And it was definitely not just highlight for me, but it was a highlight for our entire organization. So yes, we were talking about Eric just, just a bit ago. I love you, Eric, so much. And thank you for everything you've done for all of us. Richard Brooke on here all day long. It's the crew. Everybody will see you all next week. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, everybody. Great show.